Now, can I persuade you to join us for a drink? All right, but nothing too strong. Hello, and welcome oh. to the Three Point Two Coming, a podcast about Star Wars, X-wing, ASMR videos, and what? And I guess Warhammer. We were talking about Warhammer a lot earlier. We were, but we're not actually about ASMR. No, I promise. <laughs> we're about AOS, Age of Sigmar. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Anyway, um. When hey, did that happen? I don't know. <laughs> hey, everybody, I'm well, Scott. We were waiting for you They today. went on a whole thing about it. We, we got Caleb interested. Yeah, Caleb almost fell asleep. Right? They did not get me interested. <laughs> I did almost fall asleep. I was, like, leaning here all the You could, like, see the look in his eye means. where he wished he were dead. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Star Wars <laughs> <laughs> Company. A Star Wars podcast about... Yeah, I don't know. Um, hey, everybody, I'm Scott. Um... Today, I am drinking straight from the liquor store, Big Bad ba- the Baptista. Oh, that shit. Oh, Big good. Bad Baptist is good. Yeah, yeah it's really that's, good. That's the Mexican coffee version. That's mm-hmm. It's super, super good. good. <laughs> it's like it's really Mexican tragic that I have to years. be to work at 5 a.m. after drinking this. Hooray for me. Oh, good God. decision. That's right. mm-hmm. tomorrow, Scott, problem. Yep. Yeah, I know. Tomorrow, <laughs> Scott can deal with that shit. Kick that can down the road. That's right. <laughs> Um, joining us today. Hey, Eric, how are you doing? Good. What are you drinking? Uh, I'm drinking an 801 from Uinta. Uinta's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Also joining us today, it's Caleb. Hey, Caleb. Hey, everybody. I'm drinking a w root beer that I've decided is partially alcoholic because I put it in the mini fridge with the beers for uh, a while. Actually, that's cream soda. Mm-hmm. Yep, you're right. Mm. It is. <laughs> See, <laughs> the alcohol has already seeped in and destroyed my mind. drunk. Yep. <laughs> go, go home, they Caleb. Help. Drink your drunk. <laughs> I mean, Perry has powers. Or what did that I say? You it was can't root beer. <laughs> it's definitely not root beer. No, it's not. It's A and W though. It's the only kind of cream soda we're drinking. Sure. Uh, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> also joining us today, is Stu. Hey, Stu. Hey, I'm Stu. I am uh, just drinking the last dregs of a cutthroat pale ale from Uinta, and I'm about to open a Roja Back Porch Pale Ale. Mm. Mike's a big fan of that. Speaking of Mike, also joining us today is Mike. That's right. What uh, bullshit are you drinking? Yep. I've I've been the beer snob on the podcast before. I used to always try to get good stuff, but I just decided life's not worth it anymore. He's Fuck it. Broken. <laughs> Life is not worth it. <laughs> so, so I am drinking my cold uh, blue Rockies. I've got a uh, silver bullet, some Coors Light tonight. Yeah. Keeping it classy. You should just shock out that shit. And later we're going to have a vote about if Mike can stay on podcast or not. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Do you want to edit the podcast, Eric? No, nope, Mike can stay. <laughs> that was easy. Yeah. Yeah. That, that one's always real quick. Uh-huh. <laughs> would you like extra work? I, no, I would not. Mike is the most indispensable member of this podcast. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. true. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, Brody's still out because uh, he had a baby. And, and so. congrats to Brody for having a relatively easy baby. Congrats to uh, Kelvin, <laughs> Ricky over on Scum and Villainy for having a relatively easy baby. Hey, I've heard he's even had a speedy, speedy recovery. Yeah. Jealous of both of you motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, Mike's over here, like, walking in with the thousand-yard stare, just like... Uh, uh, yeah, screamed. we looked at him, he's like, I have Coors Light. <laughs> Get screamed at for two and a half hours. My ears were ringing before we started. It's a good night. Yeah, huzzah! Uh, speaking of a good night, hey regionals. Do you have good nights? Recently, that's a good beer. They're a good ratio beer. Good nights. Good night. Good night. Good nights. Okay, that's the original ratio beer, isn't Oscar it? Oscar Blues Brewery. I don't know. It's just the best one I've ever found because that, it's like it dirt cheap and it's like nine percent. <laughs> Uh, man. Have you ever had Old Chub? <laughs> Same brewery. It's, really, it's, it's also a ratio beer. It's like 9%. It's really it's, good. It's, it's real good, but it's, it's real sweet. Like each other yeah, like you can't have a time. side look like, who's going to make the Old Chub joke? I think that's the point. <laughs> They've all been done already. Uh-huh, yeah. Back to the regional. Yeah, uh, 57? So we had 57 people that showed up um, out of the 58 that were signed up going in. Including the two people that I could have sworn would not show up on time. So, uh-huh. 
Congratulations, Brandon and Jacob, for being there on time. I oh, God. Are you serious? <laughs> so proud I of did you. not God, think you were going to... I didn't think you were going to yeah, put them on blast Of course, I played Brandon like round one. They were not God. even... They were not only on time. They were both there like 20 <clears throat> minutes before the game started. Did you message them separately and be I, like, yes, it, it starts at nine. Dice are rolling I at said, nine. I said, <laughs> now I we know. Jacob a message the night before at like 8.30 and I said, Jacob, this is your friendly reminder that the tournament starts at 9.30. You should be there by nine. <laughs> a few minutes later, he sent me back a message that said, you are a kind and lovely person. Thank you so much. I love Jacob. <laughs> Jacob's the best. Yep. Yep. <laughs> So, I didn't think you were going to put them on blast like that. I thought you were just going to be I'm like, joking around. there were two people that came on time and they know who they are. Yeah, they know who they are. They know who they are. I was now super we know what it takes. Yep. Yeah. So, 57 people. We had six rounds of Swiss. Yep. How many uh, score championship buys got turned in? We had 11 buys yeah, in wow. the first round. 10 of them were from store championships. What were the other ones? The other, other regionals? Or? No, because we had an odd state. number. The other one was because we had an odd number of players. We yeah. had, we had uh, 57 players. So one person got 10 of them had store championship oh, buys, which left over 46. I see. And then one guy had the first round buy. And we had people number. from all over come out to this region. Yeah, we, we had, had people from Arizona, from Idaho, from Washington. That's where Seattle is, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. Um, Colorado. Colorado. Texas. Montana. Do we have a Texas guy? Texas. We have a Texas guy. Um, and Minnesota. Yeah, and Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah. We had people from all over the place. We had uh, Carson Ray from Radio TCX was there. Minnesota, um, yep. And, yeah, is that the, he's from Minnesota. And then... Mm-hmm. And uh, Kyle from uh, Evergreen Squadron. Kyle from Evergreen. He's like, yeah, Kyle. He made Kyle. it to the final. Congratulations, Kyle. Uh, we'll talk about his final a yeah. little bit later. Or um, we had guys... No, as up. We had guys from all over the place. Yeah, it was yeah, really cool. Fuck. Far more out-of-state people than we had last year. Because last year we had 39 people, I think, that showed up. So we beat that by almost 20. So I honestly expected bad. more of the like, Idaho guys that I recognize. I didn't see almost any of them. No, maybe they were going to a different one. Maybe they're going to Denver this okay. weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Could be. Um, but so, yeah. Uh, so Mike and I, uh, we played in that regional. Uh, if... You want to put played if, you, if you want to call it that, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we've talked about our bullshit lists. We talked about our lists last episode and one before. Um, I did triple PS11 Rebel Aces because I didn't get much of a chance to practice. So I was like, I'm just going to take the crutch of moving less all the time. <laughs> um, didn't help a whole lot. Yeah. I brought 67% of the decimators in the regionals. And how many extra hit points did you get out of determination this uh, time around? Determination triggered thirteen times. That That's right. Time. That's a it was amazing. <laughs> That's thirteen hull upgrades. That's like That's a whole no, extra 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 extra. <laughs> no, it's not hull upgrades. It's shield upgrades because you discard the crit. Yeah, it's, it's better than a hull upgrade. Man, yeah. That's a lot of uh, things. That's uh, a lot of points you saved. Uh huh. It helped me to get to two and four. <laughs> Yeah, we had a a rough start to the day. Uh, lunch was after round two, right, mm-hmm. Caleb? Yeah, and I think we'll change that next year. Yeah, change it up to be right in the morning. I always do it after this. I always try to do it so that it's not like a late lunch time-wise right. when I do those. But I think that having the second round and then lunch mess a lot of people up. Yeah. Uh, Scott and I went to lunch with uh, Justin, local player, uh Dennis and Kyle from Washington and Kyle <laughs> Kyle and Justin had like used buys and had won everything and then me Scott and Dennis were like, we were team zero and six combined at lunch yeah, today. Yeah, um, was good. Yeah, no Brandon who showed up on time to kick my ass in round one. This is a, is a real uh, good game. Uh, came down to time and I think points. He won on MOV. Uh, Asajj and two TLTs. Poe just couldn't take down two TLTs by himself. And in my second game, I played Ben from uh, Colorado. I think he's one of the Back to Dials guys. Ooh. And he had Damn. two uh, of the Skurgs. And he did the cloaking tugboat thing where you uh, use Visago to swap out the illicit slot. And that game was over real quick because he had some harpoon missiles. 
Oh, is that where the dice were hot that, that, fire? They were oh, super yeah. Cool. They I walked up and like saw hot some of that. fire and magma Holy and everything garbage. else you yeah. can imagine. Well, like, he played well. I thought I had Poe only taking one um, shot from a harpoon missile. I ended up being two. I used Fen Rao's ability to shut down modifiers. Didn't matter. Uh, in 14 dice that were thrown in quick succession, there were 10 crits and three hits there was one blank red die so i that got guidance chipped uh well uh, some, some of those crits were guidance chipped oh okay got but, it. but got since it. for some reason the scourge has a primary attack value of three uh-huh another problem with it um but yeah he he dumpstered me real quick and i just said hey how about we get an early start on lunch hells yeah we went to the pie yeah how'd your first two go scott uh the first game i lost by literally one hit point Oh. And in fact, it was on a simultaneous fire that I almost got it to, and then it would have gone to dice, and we both had six, so... Uh, but that was a really good game. Uh, God, what was my second game? Uh, I can't even remember my second game. That good. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. I don't know, I've kind of blanked out a lot of that, because, you know... Well. We came back, and uh, I ended up winning round three, played Dan, a local, um, and Dan's a super cool guy. He uh, had Jansen and uh, AP5 and Kanan Ghost build. Hmm. Also came down to time where I had, was just running with X-Wings to win on points. Um, and then my round four game, I went up against the dreaded Nim Miranda combo. Mm. And here is where I blame part of my experience on the players in Utah being too goddamn wholesome. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Nobody. 100%. Nobody ever brings stuff like uh, Memoranda or Racklow or just harpoon, like triple harpoon missile lists because we have this like honor code where we never practice this shit against each other so i was like yeah i I think i know what to oh shit trajectory simulator what you hit all three of my shit well okay we're done (laughs) yeah yeah uh we had successfully uh shunned racklo out of the meta in utah until and then we all started playing (laughs) well and and the only reason i won my round three game against dan is he didn't put tlt on his ghost because he doesn't like the card. We have too many nice people like that. I know, right? <laughs> and I'm like, it wasn't Dan running Sync Turret on it? Yeah, it's Sync Turret, yeah. Sync Turret. We it, actually had a discussion with some people at Worlds on how they were they were impressed we did as well as we did based on that we don't get to practice against medalists. So, Utah people, it's okay to take good stuff to it's casual not. nights. Don't no, it's do not. It. Stop it. You well, don't only we can do that. Anyway. It was one of the biggest... No. <laughs> on casual nights... I show up with Nara with the stupid saturation salvo accuracy corrector bullshit. Okay, if you show up and you're going to play two games, like you can have a bullshit list, it's, but it's okay to practice against something mm-hmm, good, too. Mm-hmm. It's There's a big difference between tonight's casual night, bring something fun, and tournament coming up, let's and practice some good lists. But, but our ideas are of good lists still have this false honor code attached to them. Right, it's true. <laughs> like, I <I'm> straight up <laughs> should have shown up with Racklo. Like, and just, the only guy, the uh, only if you guy from Racklow, Utah, you might have made the cut with as many oh, Nimorandas as I know. Well. The only oh, guy yeah. with I had a dumpster fire Yeah, and he was in the top four. Mm-hmm. Stop being so goddamn wholesome, Utah. It was a pretty, pretty. So there were three decimators, one Racklow list, and then Scott's <laughs> determination. <laughs> <laughs> and the Racklow player dropped after like the fourth or fifth round. Yeah. Right? I dropped after round four as well to go dad mode for a little bit, and then I came back for the cut later. I know I played fake Kenny, and um, I beat him, but then gave him a fidget spinner. Nice. <laughs> and that game was close, and he probably could have won, but he had bad dice. We used the fidget spinners for the bounty in the fifth round, and so many tables were like, the hell is this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty shit. <laughs> <laughs> Any other memorable matchups from the rest of your day, Scott? Uh, no. Oh, oh, um, um, Mom. I just wished I was dead the whole time. 
<laughs> no, because I was having fun keeping count of determination, and every time it came up, just like, ha ha! You, you were keeping track of that the way that Eric used to keep track of stress on Dinger. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The, the <laughs> shocking part is, by the way, determination did not trigger in the sixth round. So I had 13 determination pulls going into the sixth round. That's nice. amazing. I was God. really hoping to get up to uh, 16 and thus have paid for the best I just kind of like wanted to watch, like I would have liked to have watched you just been like, determination trigger, like you, you still <laughs> lost. <laughs> I don't even care. Uh, no, I, I should point out in my first round when it came down to the last shot that was getting put into me, uh, my opponent used guidance tips to change a crit to a hit <laughs> so that it would not trigger determination because if it triggered determination, I would have had a hit point left. Can they do that? Yeah. I thought it said... Well, it's, it's, a two two dice primary shift. it's a two dice primary shift. Yeah. So guidance Oh, chips. he rolled a natural crit. He rolled a natural you, crit. It lets you change yeah. something. He rolled like hit, hit, crit, and he was like, guidance chips the crit to a hit so you can't pull a pilot card? <laughs> You were in his head, man. Well, yeah, because I had like four or five triggers that game. It was ridiculous. That's that's amazing. Because he had one hit point left, and I, you know. You would have shot back. I, I still got to shot, shoot oh. back because we were with PS4, but I would have lived another round. Oh, uh, I see. Eric and I had a pretty good day, too. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we yeah. won. Oh, cool. The forces of chaos overcame the forces of order. Uh, we beat John and Katie, in case they're listening. Um, <laughs> and by we, I mean Stu's guys are really good and carried our army. <laughs> so top eight, K- uh, Caleb. <laughs> so the top eight, I was so tired by the time we got to the cut. There were So it's a lot different running a regional than it is running the big Intermountain Cup. Mm-hmm. I went into it thinking, I kind of know at least a little bit about what I'm doing here after running the Intermountain Cup. But running the regional was far more exhausting. There's, yeah. I got to put this in before I forget. There was this interesting thing I noticed throughout the day. We had 30 tables to start the day, or like 28 tables. Mm-hmm. Throughout the day, tables like 22 through 30, not a single one of them called me over for a judge's call. Yep. Not to measure an arc, not to check a roll, not to, not to do anything. They just <clears throat> sorted their stuff out. Tables... Like 10 through 20, he called me over a fair number of times, but it was always for something straightforward. Like, can you check this arc? It's close enough. We'd like a judge to check it. Okay. Or quick rules clarification or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Tables 1 through 10, god damn it. Every just inane (laughs) rule thing you can think of came from that I don't even think I played my first game in tables 1 through 10. I did. I was in the the back room there. (laughs) So there's clearly a big difference I was not expecting. The guys in the top tables were keyed in and wanted everything perfect. And that goes back to our unhealthily wholesome Utah attitude. Yeah. (laughs) So that was quite interesting. Over the course of the day. And that wore me out after a while. But we got through it. Top 8 had 7 Rebel lists. Uh-huh. 4 of them were Nimranda. Uh-huh. 1 Scum list and 0 Imperials. And by the way, that Scum list contained Nim. It, it did. It was Asajj Nim, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was Carson. That was right? Carson. Yeah. He had the Scum list. And so we had 1 Mirror Match mm-hmm. Nimranda in the top 8. That's mm-hmm. what prevented us from having full Nimranda top four pretty much. Yeah. Or the potential for it. But then wow. I think Kyle had something to Kyle say. Kyle had that something too. to say about that because Kyle went into the top eight and he played Nimranda and then he beat it. And then he played Nimranda and he beat it. And then he played Nimranda and he almost <laughs> beat it. <laughs> oh man. If I remember right, because I was kind of out of it at the time, I think that in the final it came down to he rolled with Poe on Miranda and missed it by one hit, yeah. killing her. Oh. And if he got her, the game was his. Mm-hmm. Because then sh- Then he's got all of the ships. He had all the, the he would have had all the ships left against Nim who had a little bit of damage. Not a whole lot, but a little bit of damage. Yeah. But because he didn't get Miranda, uh 
John Grasser was able to eliminate his Jess and his Poe that mm-hmm. round and left him with just Low Rick against Miranda and him. Yeah. So then he called it. Mm-hmm. It was like I'm not gonna dance. I'm not gonna. It was after midnight, by the way. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was yeah. like twelve thirty or so. My God. Uh, we were able to stream out and record the top four game that Kyle played for the Dream, which was, was insane. Super. It's an awesome amazing game. game. As soon as it. you think it's over, it's not. And then when you think it's over, then by the way, it's not. I think we called it like multiple times during that game. Yeah, well, and we were just going along with Twitch chat, like, ah, oh, dang. Sucks for Kyle. Wait, we're still going. Wait, we're still going. What crit was that? Holy shit, what crit was that? It was, it was Mike, great. you need to go check. Tell me if he's used his integrated yet. Mike, yeah. go check this. Yeah, uh, we'll put the link to that in the description for this episode on our YouTube channel. Um, There's also an interview with Carson Ray on that stream. Yeah, and, and we... And, well, oh, yeah, because you guys got to talk to him after he was done, right? We interview Carson. We interview Kyle a little bit. Yep. Um, Brad... Uh, is Brad Hepler? Scott, Scott, Scott Hepler, Hepler uh, yeah. who lost to Kyle in that awesome mm-hmm. top four game. Uh, his first regional, by the way. Yep. Where can people watch this video? At 3.2company.com. No, wait. Hang on. <laughs> nope. <laughs> so, YouTube.com slash 3.2company. Spell the point. I think that's our YouTube channel, isn't it? Should be the most recent one, shouldn't it? Should be. Just, well, no, because we've been just putting up... for the, a 3.2 company on YouTube. Yep. It's we have definitely been that. putting up a uh, our recordings of the podcasts on there. So it's the most recent full video, but there is audio versions of the podcast in YouTube form. Yeah. So... Anything else about the regional? Uh, I guess we should say congratulations to Jonathan Grasser. Absolutely. He won. Mm-hmm. He flew uh, all along. He had more final salvos than I can possibly imagine in one tournament. Mm-hmm. Kind of blew Th- that's my mind true. A little bit. His top four game against his, Jerry Russell came down to final salvos. His yeah. top eight game was a final salvo. His sixth round of Swiss was a final salvo. His top four game was a final salvo. Well, and that, that so top the reason four game, he went to midnight was his fault. <laughs> Essentially, yes. <yeah. laughs> that, that, that I was fully expecting the cut to move a lot faster, <laughs> like it did for the Intermountain Cup. Where oh, it was yeah. like, oh, hey, we started the cut and it's scheduled to go till midnight, but we were out of there by 1030. No, they used every single minute. Well, mm-hmm. in that top four game where John played uh, Jerry Russell, uh, it was Nimiranda versus Plot Armor, the Dash Poe list. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a lot of, you know, tight maneuvers on there. And it might have turned out different if there were half points on small base ships. Quite oh, yeah. possibly. For either of them, but... It, it all came down to the five die for each player. Final mm-hmm. salvo. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. We managed to keep the place pretty cool. We had the fans. Yeah. We Water didn't fog up the windows like didn't uh, fog up the we windows. had like last year. Yeah. It didn't smell too much like sweaty nerd ass all yeah. day. Mm-hmm. Seemed like we did a pretty good time. We had a pretty Word. good time. Everybody seemed to have fun. Uh, so. I, I think the bottled waters really helped. I was a big fan yeah. of that. Um, and yeah, it was just tight. It was run... Very well, thank you, Caleb, for doing that. Um, there was not; it was it was not any of that wishy washy. Well, like I guess, I guess the next round will start in like fifteen minutes or something. It's like no, next round, go. Let's do this. That's how I keep roll. moving. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, props to you, Caleb, for doing that. That was good. That's Cheers, good. sir. Uh-huh. I wish I would have got to play, but no uh, you're going down to Albuquerque. Right? Not anymore. No. Work, no. work is work is getting in the way, so I will not be able. Fucking work. Because you were gonna fly Blue Squadron. I was thinking about it, yeah, yeah. but I probably if I was gonna get to go, I'd probably fly my PS11 Pel Bases. Oh, okay. Okay. But work gets in the way, so I'll just have fun at the tournaments we're running here locally for the next little while. Speaking of local tournaments, you're gonna be doing a bunch of local tournaments, right? Yep. We're gonna have for those in the Utah area that do the demolition games, the third Saturday of every month is gonna be tournament Saturday at Demolition Games and last Wednesday. Night of every month, we're going to do a mini-themed tournament. The one for this month is going to be Ion Mechanics. Ha-ha! Your list have to have at least three ships, and at least two of them have to have an Ion Mechanic equipped. It's the rise of Dace Boner Arm. So, for those of you who don't fun. remember what Ion He's tokens look rising. like or what they do, you might want to check those reference cards yep. before you come. We've got some cool <laughs> ideas on tap. Uh, Leans of the Crew is also available. Don't bring Shizor. No. Oh, Rinse Pizor is fucked. Uh, <laughs> that's a spoiler for later. Ooh. You can run it with ion dischargers. 
Uh, it's <laughs> mechanic. It's true. Use pull stray yeah. shields. Yeah. Pull stray shields. Use the bombs. Use the missiles. Use the cannons. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey guys, I have pulse penis. missiles. Are a three cost missile that lets you keep your target lock, so it should be rising to the top of the meta. Yeah, right? what was that? There was that quick draw list. No, Tomax Bren with that list that was bonkers back in the day. Oh, guys, do you remember Tomax <laughs> Bren and no, Tide it was Bombers? Good old Tommy. It was so long ago in the meta. Look, <laughs> at some point, they're going to come out with Zamot Bren, and then it's going to be super cool. <sighs> Damn it. Dude. Well, Unfortunately, just, all damage to one of them goes to both of them. What the hell is Zamot? I, I brain? just missed so G.I. Joe backwards. <laughs> there were two brothers <laughs> named Tomax and Zamot. Two brothers. They felt each other's pain and they were like evil stockbrokers for Cobra. And so why look, is one of them a pilot? Or a the look, pilot? The look on Aaron's face. It's not. It's not. It's, not. it's just the same name as a G.I. Joe character. Oh. Tomax and Zaymont. You know, kind of thinking about it, though. But now you know. List, you could potentially convert that list and put uh, harpoons in it instead of the Tomax with concussions har- or whatever, yeah, whatever he had. Tomax with harpoons is probably really good. Tomax crack shot Like that harpoons. combo would mm-hmm. still be all right. Yeah. It's just the problem is it's a uh, tie bomber, and that's six hole. Well, that's no why you got draw their fire up. on quick draw. Oh yeah, to okay. trigger that extra attack. And oh yeah, no, that list. That list that's, is still probably yeah. That's pretty the list good. I was talking about. It's it's Carnor with Vi because mm-hmm. he's basically there for that missile strike to make. It was it was to kill defenders. You could yeah. potentially swap that part. Of the archetype out because it's not as relevant mm-hmm. with the Nim Miranda thing being around, which is also not as relevant as it used to be. So we were going to talk about the massive internet slap fight that happened over the weekend. <laughs> Let's please do. I mean, <laughs> nope. okay, we can, but I, I spent yes. like half an hour going over list juggler, looking at all these tournament results, and as soon as I was fucking done, that's when the fact dropped. I'm like, well, fuck it, we don't need to talk <laughs> about this anymore. Because oh, we were going to talk about, uh, do we need a fact? How quick are we going to get one? What should it address besides uh, trajectory? Why did we get one? This this one. We definitely because the meta became this. so fucking toxic that they had to change it. You're this was an me, emergency meeting. You're telling this me was that like this was Nimrando was more toxic this go around than Triple Jumps or Dengaru was. Dengaru is not toxic. I think part the of the problem is the effect on the community. Yes, and also oh. that you had TOs that had no way of that could not like come that to consensus. I can get behind, I can get behind the fact that Fantasy Flight was like shit. We've got yeah. regionals ruling all this crap. But it was yes. their regional. Yeah. They yeah. did that on purpose. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that forced yeah, I mean, the ball to get rolling on the That's FAQ. probably what probably. happened. They, they probably, they were probably like, had a lot of this stuff in place already. They were probably just still working on it. Well, I think we I can now call some bullshit more, yeah. whenever they say, oh, it takes too long to get a fact out. Yeah. No, yeah. I, yeah. I, the whole I, claim of it takes Disney forever to approve it. Well, no, I, I think that's still true. Well, I think I got to think about how things work in my office. Um, I this think, is a hot fix. Well, it's, it's a hot fix, but it was never like legally required that everything go through Lucasfilm. But they did it anyway as an internal policy to keep everything on the up and up, keep the mouse happy. Mm-hmm. But this in, time they may have just gone in, around. In this it. case, they're like, okay, we need to do this now. It's not something we have to do. We've just been doing it, you know, on good faith or whatever, yeah. as a best practice. Or I'm just shocked they did it in the middle of regional season. They I could have have sworn to. They, they would wait to and do it right after regional. I think a big part of it is that there worlds. were a number of judges that were saying, "Hey, emails and twit tweets and whatever from people don't count as official rulings." They so came they out said and that. said yeah, that. They said that, and they because said, "Hey, rules is written. We have to follow this." So you, this is what we're doing, and we don't care what the regional that's being done at FFG is doing. We are doing it this way, and then other people were doing it other ways. And I think that, more than anything, pushed FFG's hand and said, okay, this is not going to fly. This is going to be the worst regional season if you have to call up your It was TO super and inconsistent, ask. and yeah. not just with Trajectory Simulator, trajectory simulator and Genius, it's also the harpoons, harpoons and TLT. With TLT and with other things mm-hmm. and all 
all sorts of Man, stuff. And it's almost like, you know, if you're going to come out with like a new keyword, you should define that keyword and there what are it no does. Keywords. Did you not forget that the word immediately has no actual value oh, in FFG cards? Right. That's right. Maybe they should use some fucking keywords. Mm. I yeah. think that my favorite way that this got handled, I think it was the Maryland Regional, they ended up not using the cancer combination. They, they followed the FFG TO's uh, mm-hmm. ruling. That's what I was going to originally do. <clears throat> well, I, I know, but, but this guy, he pulled all the people that were registered and like, hey, how do you want to do this? It was Let's like 70 something to four. Yeah, it was overwhelmingly in favor of the fixed way of doing things. I really liked that decision of mm-hmm. how Because that's it. fucking bullshit. Be able to eye on someone all the way across the fucking map mm-hmm. at PS10. Yep. 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 So, yeah, going down that fact, that's the thing, that, that's the biggest one. Is so, that so they this specifically fact, yeah. call out Genius and Trajectory Simulator do not function together. So this fact has a specific of, title. Uh-huh. And I want Eric to tell us what that title is. I forgot is. what the it's title in, is. You made it, in it the up. Show notes. You came up with it. I I have the memory of a goldfish. <laughs> oh, I know uh-huh. what you're talking um, about. So he's, the, he's, the fact subtitle is, y'all a bunch of assholes. Of course you can't <laughs> do that. Why do you have to be such dicks? <laughs> yeah, and that applies to like 95% of the stuff in this FAQ. It's oh, all just not like, even the, no shit. Not even the the, the Sabine <laughs> one is my favorite because it's like... <laughs> Why did that have to be in there? Who was being like, no, you have to do it on the first time? Two separate people asked me that exact question at the regional, and I am glad I ruled it the way that it just does Where where does it indicate that Sabine has to be chosen? It's never, ever been that it's the first bomb that goes off. It's always been whenever the fuck you feel like it. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't even say May on the goddamn card. (laughs) <laughs> like you could just not even do it if you wanted to. Yeah. Hey, by the way, now it means that uh, if you don't call out your Sabine, then missed opportunity. It's true. Oh shit. Yeah, we've already moved past the damage. <laughs> so. Yeah. No, actually, like if he removes a bomb, I'm so glad we played Magic up. the Gathering now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, uh, speaking of another Magic the Gathering style ruling, uh, R.I.P. Our Kimohila pilot. Oh, yeah. You were already dead on arrival. Well, and now... Fucking we'll we'll stupid. Hold on. Let's talk about the good stuff okay. first. <laughs> okay. So You don't want to make a shit sandwich? <laughs> like, sprinkle some good in there yeah. in the middle. No, we're not going to do that. Just, the, the good stuff first, because some of it is blatantly obvious, I agree, but it's good if it saves T.O.'s, like, Caleb time. I know, right. but it's just sad right. that we've come to that point, that mm-hmm. it has to be like... So let's run down the good. So uh, I, this was just kind of in order as I was reading it today. Uh, the harpooned condition timing got clarified. It can it can be triggered by things like TLT if there's an uncancelled crit, even if that wouldn't traditionally result in critical damage. And they use jamming beam in their example, so I'm taking that as a personal challenge now to try and trigger Trigger on jamming beam. With, we'll be revisiting that beam. part though in the bad yeah. world. <laughs> Fucking TLT triggering the harpoon condition. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Yeah, this shouldn't be in the good. That's terrible. I put it no, in the it's, bad too. No, the, it's the good, good is because it's now clarified. it's clarified. That's the good part. The bad part is that it triggers. Okay. Um, fine. Uh, <laughs> hey, we'll uh, everybody's second favorite YT twenty four hundred pilot. Uh, Limbo. My second favorite is Eden Brill. Yeah, but we all agree that the pilot did draft Eden, that Eden, did Eden Brill, Brill go shit. for. It? Yeah, how many points did he go for? I don't like, know. 40? Not a lot. Hey. Uh, big tournaments in Europe have been won by Lebo before this ruling. Yeah, yeah, but that was solely because it was a heavy laser cannon on a YT-2400 and Lebo's cheaper than Dash. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, he, by the he, way, you run Lebo with determination and you get to pick pilot crits. That's probably like 18 or 19 triggers <laughs> over the course Hell, of six yeah. Well, Lebo <laughs> definitely says fuck you to Kylo because uh, no. uh, they ruled that you can use his ability... With the I'll show you the dark side conditions. I'm like, yeah, no, I don't want that one. I'm gonna take another one and see. When, Just as long as the next one on top is in another pilot one. When no, I the next one on top is major explosion making to direct hit. <laughs> oh, damn it, I'll take the black So uh, confirmation for Sabine um, and this whole FAQ being FFG trying to shut up the loudest assholes. Your upgrade bar gains the bomb upgrade icon. 
Once per round, before a friendly mom token is removed, choose one enemy ship at range one of that token. It suffers a damage. Yep. That's... Once per round, I'm pretty you sure, choose. Uh, I'm pretty you sure choose. you just said that me being your opponent, I get to pick which ship you put that on and when. <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard that. Stuck and I just, dumb. I don't understand. Um, it's uh, not like finally, like, no, they, I'm not going to say it. Yep, they finally got through and fucking fixed all the feedback array and blinded pilot interactions. <laughs> I can't wait for that to be its own set clarified. feedback array to be its own separate page of the fact. No, it's already was, like oh, half I was column. so happy about that one because I was sitting at the regional looking at the FAQ reading it just to be sure. And it contradicts itself and in it, the it's fact. So, in so the last the FAQ they edited both the blinded pilot entry and the feedback array entry opposite of each other in the same FAQ. Like the red text Mm-hmm. They made the edit at the same time and it was wrong, and then they had to fix it in this one. Yep. Um, yeah. One of them said one way, one of them said the other. I put I put this next one in there just because I thought about building a list uh, like Jan-Ors this. And advanced Jan-Ors optics. and advanced optics, yep. so Poe could still get a focus and evade. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love when they keep buffing Rebel Crew cards. No one's running Janor's crew. Well, actually, I don't understand no. though. I let Janor's like, on my Nora. How is yeah. that? A necessary thing. Uh, people would be saying well, that he's initially assigned a focus token and he can't so you have couldn't two get focus tokens. Advanced, opt- it, advanced Optics says you cannot have more than one. You could still perform the action, though. You just don't get anything. I... I right. agree with that you. Was yeah. the this is the, another one of those. Yeah, like, oh no, you don't get a second focus token that then changes to an evade token. It was clarification of when it changes to an evade token. Yeah, I, I just have to say about the whole Harpoon TLT thing, the logic they used to say that that's legal is the same logic they said you can't use for a genius trajectory simulator. Yes. Like, it's a ruling uh-huh. I'm happy with. I'm glad you can't do that. But they needed to change the text on both of those cards yep. Yep. to make that happen. Mm, it's uh-huh. almost like they should be consistent with stuff. Well, so like, when they come out with yeah. new stuff, we can use previous preced- precedent and thing. consistency like to now, figure out how it you works can just, when they don't tell us how You can just make up anything you want and be like, yeah, well, apparently logic doesn't matter. No, I thought about doing that a couple times. That's yeah. been the problem for a long time in facts. It's like this thing says this way, this thing says that way. So that's why there's all these arguments on the internet about it. And people are like, well, if you look at this card, it's like, well, it doesn't fucking matter because FFG just does what they feel like. Yep. Uh, hey, Lightning Reflex Slam. Who the fuck is running that? <laughs> also, I it, hope. Like, no, no, that's an okay combination. I've thought about it. Yeah. But like, who on earth tried to argue that you multiply the maneuver by two when you do so. Oh, God, you right. cannot do a six speed maneuver. <laughs> right. Of fucking course you don't it's get to people why, trying to Why won't you missile. let me do a six speed maneuver and shoot a cruise missile? Like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Even though the cruise missile is capped. Is yeah. it capped? Yeah. 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 <laughs> well still, I want to do it. <laughs> no, it's so that you can do a three and then a three and thus get six and then hit the cap of five. Uh-huh. You still execute Whatever. the same speed. Mo- yeah. I, like, yeah, I feel like I'm just talking stupid. to a company yeah. that I don't give a shit about. Luckily, they didn't so. nerf my adrenaline rush uh, <laughs> slam combo that's coming. Yeah. Or, four straight, four straight slam <laughs> followed up with a cruise missile. That'll totally work. Or your budget 10 shield upgrade combo. <laughs> uh, no, they actually totally nerfed that, by the way. Oh, did they nerf that? <laughs> yeah, they actually the pointed out that... Determination can trigger once. <laughs> oh, no, 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 not that. They nerfed the, the chopper. chopper. Oh, they, they yeah, no, I was talking they, about they, determination. No, they, they pretty much said, Ryan Farmer, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, He wasn't no, the chopper. only one arguing about I, that, he, but But still. he was, like, the first in the world. They had to add it. So, the subtitle, like, the subtitle of this fact came to me... While I was reading that, I was like, yeah, this is fucking stupid. I can't believe we have to say this. <laughs> right. You have to say that you can't exceed your shield value with I regeneration. Can't be but that was so annoying to talk about shield when upgrades. freaking pull stray shields came out and guns for hire. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. that. And there were several people here locally that were like, no, you can do it. And I was like, no, there's no way that Fantasy Flight intends for you to be able to charge your shields beyond the print value on the card. Mm-hmm. There's Absolutely no way that is there. You well, can with you gun. Never know. <laughs> well, sort of. I mean. sort of. <laughs> Apparently, you can just Gong. do whatever uh-huh. because 
No, hey, Cox no, didn't get there for this. Remember, he might have been here. Tell you guys Actually, no, he kind of did because you can't like overcharge your shields with Gonk. No, Actually, because the shields go on Gonk. Yeah, right here. yeah. All of this comes back to nihilist ASMR um, <laughs> because at FFG, nothing matters. Nothing matters. Just give up and play. You no, know, the almighty dollar matters over have there. You heard about Age of Star. How dare they? <laughs> I know. How dare they like money? Uh, yeah, trajectory simulator Th- this is doesn't the, work the, with it, genius. Also, by the way, it doesn't work with Crimson Specialist, so fuck you. Yeah. Well, why the fuck Thanks for nerfing it? my draft list. <laughs> but that Crimson Specialist you didn't even want. So the actual new tech, or the FAQ says, trajectory simulator can be used only when the ship would drop a bomb via the means printed on an equipped bomb upgrade card. It cannot be used while using Genius to drop a bomb after performing a maneuver or in conjunction with any other effects that override the manner in which the bomb is dropped, such as Crimson Specialist. Yep. And, and when this came out this afternoon, we sort of had a, 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 not an argument, but I thought that Stu was joking. And then I was like, oh God, he really is mad about this. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I fucking nerfed Death Ray. I'm with you, Stu. Okay. Listeners, I think they have nerfed the Punisher as many times as they have nerfed the Jumpmaster. I need somebody to confirm this for me. <laughs> Poor bastard when, Punisher. When I tried counting it up, I have four Jumpmaster nerfs and three Punisher nerfs. I desperately want someone to remind me of a fourth p- Punisher nerf because Which, that would be amazing. I was close when I posted that uh, downfall video because yeah. I said they're, yeah. they're fucking redline again. <laughs> Just missed it. They it were trying to nerf <laughs> redline and then like Death Rain jumped in front Secret Service. So I'm like, no! Not this time! It's my turn! <laughs> <sighs> God. Do, you, do you want to talk about Death Rain at all? Or? Well, yeah, I guess. So... <laughs> I've about. I've I've since heard the argument that it didn't nerf him anyway, which I mostly agree with. But basically, this new effect is the last thing on the FAQ. It's just in the questions and answers part. So it says that after dropping a bomb, no effects that would occur if you, after. If you launch a let's see. launching a bomb does not count as dropping a bomb for effects that trigger after dropping a bomb. Which is literally the only pilot that so has the triggering that. Triggering language uses the word "drop." Mm-hmm. You can't trigger it off a of launch. Right. So but the only pilot that has an ability that triggers off dropping a bomb Death is Rain. Death Rain. So my they next specifically question specifically nerfed him. Is can you hit yourself? Yeah, yeah of course. Because you, can. Yeah, you, you launch can. forward and then you do like a. Four, does it have a four four? No, it has a three straight. It has a three straight. But you, it has a boost too, so you. Can so, so you would have to do it to yourself on purpose. Well, but a yeah. three straight is going to put you within. Will it range put you in range one, one of the five shots? So will. it says after a, uh, so effects that trigger after dropping a bomb do not occur after launching or otherwise placing a bomb. However, each ship is still limited to a single bomb drop. Blah 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 blah. So. The only thing I can think of that has an effect that occurs after dropping a bomb it's is death, death rain. Yep. And the language of trajectory simulator, which should have been changed, mm-hmm. says instead of dropping a bomb, you can launch it. But the text on death rain says after dropping a bomb. So the argument is the text was always intended just to affect dropping. Do you think that fake Dave Grohl knows the Punisher is a ship? <laughs> No, <laughs> he's doing but this like, in a vacuum. It's the unaware. same. It's the same kind of thing that like, um, like we didn't get anything that added uh, token removal effects to reinforce tokens. Yep. Well, I'm excited to hear Scott problem, explode so. about that. Uh, no, fucking god damn it. <laughs> so so we're, we're, there's two more good things. And yep. the, the next one I actually am really happy about. Uh, the clarified mall and TLT timing. So yeah. he does not trigger until the very end. So he can't modify both shots. Like if you modify the first one and it hits, you take the stress off, then you can modify it. No, that's gone. Yeah, that's good. Uh, they called out Vader crew with TLT yeah. for some reason. Like I said, of course it doesn't work that way. No, I mean like what can do what that? can take TLT and Vader crew? Something that's coming out 
oh, six sure. months from now. Yeah, Who knows? Probably. Oh. Wait, no, that would require them to future proof facts, which we know they don't do. JK Law. Unless it pertains to a Punisher. <laughs> God damn it, right? Who's like number three? Don't even care. Oh man, is that uh, going to be the Punisher fix? They were going to allow a crew in there and a turret, and then they, they were going to <laughs> gotta stop this. Not, not only okay. do you get a Punisher a title, guys, guys, if it's a zero point title for the Tie Punisher that adds a crew slot and a turret slot, is it still a shitty ship? Yes, because they keep <laughs> nerfing it. Because they just nerfed <laughs> Vader and TLT, so of course. <laughs> so it's not. It's not even nerfed. It's an effect that was FAQ'd like a year ago. Mm -hmm. Anything that says after an attack happens Wait. after both TLT attacks yep. or yep. both. That's, that was the red line one attack. That's yeah. why red line can't take a target lock was between the, shots. That was the second uh -huh. red line nerf, wasn't it? Yes. I think so. It, yeah. it, instead, okay, so you'll get the, the title for the Punisher and not just the card. They give you a sixth little pod that you put on top of the model so it's not just the cockpit and the two on the side you put one on top there yeah, that's no, we're really slot. sorry that's gonna that, that's your, your extra crew, crew slaughter turret right there i'm just pissed because my <laughs> campaign against cancer list was going to be death rain trajectory simulator is the core and now i have to figure out something else you were going to proton bomb people and barrel roll out of the way mm -hmm. that would have been great and once again I didn't know this needed to be in there, but only one bomb placement per ship per round. Which is something they've already said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Already been ruled. Uh, hey, quick question for people making rulings. I'm looking at you, Caleb. Oh, thanks. Um, does dropping rigged cargo chute count as a bomb drop? It's not a bomb. No, because it's not it's, a bomb. It's an action. It's, it's an a, action. It drops, and dropped is in bold. But it's also not a bomb slot. Like we discussed earlier. Oh, yeah, keywords no mean nothing. keywords that okay. don't mean because anything. I've actually done this with a robot list. Okay. Because, and, and at the time, we just ruled it. Like, yeah, I dropped the ion bomb, and I moved or whatever, and then... Yeah, it's an illicit it, slot. It, the okay. illicit action great. to drop the rig cargo shoot. Yeah, it doesn't use the same slot. So okay, like great, terrific. Mind. That makes that means maybe I will be flying Ace as I mean Iman Azmin. Oh, the... Ace isn't in the game yet. No. <laughs> what was that? The YT two thousand. Yes, the YT two thousand. <laughs> there should be flavor text at the bottom that just says "Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, hey," <laughs> or whatever. You got a bandit on your tail. <laughs> will, will you bring back Tie Fighter Tuesday to play X Wing Alliance? Uh, yes. Um, nice. <laughs> I've been playing it. Uh, there's some of that on there. Um, nice. It's where you realize that uh, Ebon Azamine, for some reason, has like, is it like Australian or something accent? He has like a weird accent. And the rest of his family. The doesn't. rest of his family doesn't. <laughs> it's weird. I don't like. He's like your brother. So, like, you and your sister also don't have that accent, but he does. But, and your dad doesn't, so there why does is he... a simple explanation for that. He's obviously the oldest sibling. He grew up and was raised in Australia. Space and family, Australia. It's space Australia. Family moved to Tatooine? not space Australia, yeah. <laughs> That's and then say. had more kids. They're just significantly younger than so him. So, the British so, accent in Star Wars is indicative of the core world. Yeah, it's like where Coruscant. It's all the posh Where's people. Australia indicative? Ebon asked me, where grew up the, on the end. Where's Kessel. The, Kessel. Kessel, it's the prison colony. It's God prison damn it, colony. I was going to make that that's, joke. That's better. <laughs> I didn't know Kessel was a prison colony. Yeah, yeah it's oh, a prison absolutely. colony. Yeah. Scott wins, that's so better. It's all yeah. EU stuff, so it doesn't count. Uh, Until the Han Solo movie comes out. We'll see. <laughs> Then I'll treat Kessel it as canon. When they don't ever bring I'll up treat Kessel. It as oh, no, I think oh, no, it's canon. There's in the Lego set that's been spoiled, there's literally a figure that's called Kessel Guard. And I think it's in that movie. I think, like, the yeah, official his name release. is actually Kessel, and he's a guard. <laughs> I think the official. Hey, everybody, I'm Kessel. The Kessel run was Why him dragging some <laughs> guy for 13 parsecs. Yes! <laughs> he was like, keep up, buddy. <laughs> 13. <laughs> Why do I even try to talk to Scott? Uh, so, the bad. Uh, we've all, the bad. I think we've already talked about these. Uh, fuck you, Punishers, especially you, Death Rain, you fucking dick. Because everybody was tired of getting abused by Death Rain. Yep. I am sad about the Tarani Kulda Yeah, we didn't one. quite yeah, because Tarani Kulda... I has, ruled it the opposite way. But see, that's another thing. At a couple of smaller tournaments we did recently. Yeah. That's People, another thing that's already been ruled, though. But it you sucks. You can spend... Yeah. Tokens, even if they don't generate an effect. Yeah. 
and like right, but it's the idea that you can spend. But I just feel like that's the key to spend. That's the key in. Caleb charged me ten dollars for the pizza we ate earlier, and I was like, I have no ten dollars, so I'll give you my no ten dollars. <laughs> that's that's what this ruling is. I retract my point. Yeah, no, that's hundred <laughs> percent what that ruling is. Yeah. I think that it should you work can the pay other me or not personally. eat. Well, I don't have money with me, so I pay you no dollars. But that means I paid you. <laughs> but yes. you, I, you, you received in that zero. <laughs> I did send on Venmo zero dollars. It says <laughs> there paid. There was a transaction <laughs> completed. Yes. So, so I received that... pizza. <laughs> does this mean that focus tokens are like Bitcoin? Yes. Oh, they will crash eventually. Yes. They will have no value. <laughs> the, the Apparently they when the down. bubble pops. <laughs> You mean the X-Wing bubble? Because that was, that was a cool thing about Tarani, everybody. being able to do that and be like... Force it, it, it made and force people scary. to make a choice to be like, yeah. no, nah, i got to take a focus here because I'm in that bullseye arc and he's going to get the... He's going to either... To give me a damage, at least if I take the focus, I, mean, like, I can avoid... You know, let's be real. Damage. The, um, the Chemodila... Jyla. Is, uh, the it's the Punisher of this wave. Yeah, no, it's, Let's be it's real. No, dead see, arrival. I don't think so. There were so well, it's already got its first nerf before well. the next wave came out, and and people okay. are people are finding ways no, to use it. No, I like will disagree because all that goddamn research I did on list juggler before the fat came out, nowhere near any of well, the top in the, cuts. In the Utah meta. Sorry, the because gentleman's meta. It's just we, it's that's so that's what we're gonna call it from now. <laughs> it's on. just so easy to burn that thing down in a turn. Uh huh. In a so, single turn. We were talking Especially about just like a B wing. Yeah, yeah. We were Except talking it's about got a them. shitty shield hull ratio, yeah. so it's more likely to pull uh, double crits. So put determination on it. <laughs> we were talking earlier about the lack of consistency. That was a lie. There has been consistency in making small base gum ships shitty yeah. and then shitting on them afterwards. <laughs> they just accidentally <laughs> screwed up and made the protectorate decent. Hey guys, do you Not remember how everyone it. was complaining that that sky was going to be too powerful and look at all the janky shit you can put I on mean, that thing? I mean, at least there's a like there's a crack in the door there. Like, if the right modifications come out that allow for abuse, because it ta- could be or the really right nasty. other upgrades. Because Talon Bane yeah, and Dalen Obrus are both excellent pilot abilities. It's just the chassis sucks. Yeah, if they I come out with something with days, consequences really. that they didn't foresee, which they're really good at. Um, somebody oh, they, they put, put it put together. Scum, on, scum and rebel only mod that lets you add a salvage. Yeah, astromech. it'll be scum and rebel only, and it'll just have a big middle finger with an imperial signal in it, <laughs> <laughs> and it lets you equip a salvage astromech slot. End yeah. of sentence. Hey, no, uh, th- there's hope. Episode eight showed imperial or first order. Astromex. Yeah, but those will be a totally different slot. <laughs> yeah, it'll actually be a third slot. It'll and look then like BBH. a first order ship will come out, and that it'll, have a, it'll have a resistance version that's allowed to use whichever fucking Astromex it feels like. Uh-huh. And and those <laughs> Imperial Astromex will not help Imperial pilots, and only we, Rebel pilots. And one of them will give the ship an illicit slot, too. <laughs> <laughs> and then it will be like, if you're I, a Rebel, you that can't one was charge your shield. That's the one that Poe's coming on, and it's native PS10 oh, Poe, po, right? Phrasing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's in danger again. <laughs> he's got that lip bite. And he's he, like, he is <laughs> not going to cheat on BB-8 like that. You saw how you attached he was. <laughs> I'm waiting for Fuck. the love triangle between Poe, Finn, and Rose. It's going to be no, a it, it's shit. Gonna, it's going to be like Poe, Finn, and BB-8. <laughs> just imagining a slap fight between Poe and Rose, and she'd kick the shit out of him. <laughs> yeah, no, she's way more spunky than him. Like. She just give no him. fuck. <laughs> yeah. It's just Poe twitching on the ground. Don't taste me. Oh, and, then when, and then when like, <laughs> the superior, like the general comes down, whoever it is at that point is like, what happened? And she's like, deserters. <laughs> <laughs> I hear Leia bitch slapped you in front of everybody. Here. Bap. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so back to the fact. Uh, that was a fun detour. Missed well, it's going to help because I was running out of ideas for my slash fiction and now I'm ready to get it. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> I'll read it. I'll read it. All right. <laughs> Did you run out of other slash fiction to read? You're waiting for Scott. <laughs> so um, they could have done something about reinforced tokens. God fucking damn it. I think yes. the reason they didn't is because of the speed in which we had it. Uh, if it re- if if this fact really was because of the community outcry, I think that they were like, 
we need to, we're going to quick fix a bunch of stuff and do the bunch of really super obvious stuff so people stop talking about it. I, but they're, they aren't ready to do the. I hope that there's these another fact coming ones. after regionals. And, and, and I think that's a fair assessment, Caleb. But I also hope what Scott says is true that that is coming. I, I With like actual chassis nerfs and some other things. Of Sabine Chain. Hole punch the goddamn Skurg and K-Wing. Were we going to talk about the K-Wing and Skurg? Uh, we were complaining about Reinforce, I thought. Well, then, yeah, yeah let's, let's talk about Reinforce some more. Um, it's just like fucking you were saying, yeah, that like it's probably because they don't want to have the... I think there's multiple levels to fixing... Reinforce. It's not just something as simple as saying it's a fix. Jamming the effects reinforce. It's not just thing that can one be, thing no, they no, need to it's, change. It's, it's multiple, when, and I think that's why yeah, they didn't do it. It yet. needs to be that anything that affects a focus or evade yeah. token can. Also the only affect. way they can effectively fact that is to put entries for everything in the fact, and I just think they didn't have time to do it. What? With Wes that, Jansen should be able to strip a reinforced token. Yeah, he can token. strip, like, every other token. I know, but... Connor one, Jack should make it so your reinforced token doesn't work. Or you can't Jansen take the action. actually cannot spend. strip every yeah. token. Found that out in one of my games at the regional. Evade focus target lock, and he then can, what he, else he, is there? He can take away blue target locks, but if you have a red lock on you from a friendly M9G8... Oh, well, that's like yeah, an edge case. It, it, it was an yeah. edge case, but I just happened yeah. to come across it. But that doesn't bother me. Because that's not normally a friendly button. Right, right. Okay. And, and jamming, like missile, the scrambler missiles and jamming beam came out after this thing. Yeah. And, and jamming beam be still to, lets you take a reinforce action and not lose the token. Can you imagine if Paylob could steal your reinforce? Oh, fuck yes. <laughs> Fucking so, yes. But that's, a, that's, that another, would be so that's cool. another thing that's involved with it's fixing the reinforce. No, does that make Paylob <laughs> broken? Let me I don't, that I don't, I'm not saying it does, but I'm saying it's something that if they're going to fact the reinforce token, they have to yeah. take even stuff like that. Yeah. But can other ships steal it? Well, and, yes. And, or not? And, and they've got to make all those decisions. And, and then, then you get into their in. shitty ruling about the 180 firing arc. Could and, you and where the token triggers? Yeah, I don't like that. Could either. you get rid of the reinforce action and give it an evade? Does that make the Wookiee that shitty too shitty to even play, or does it make it no? Because it's still an efficient think, chassis yeah. with that one eighty five, and it'll only work against one attack instead of all of them. Yeah, and then breach you change breach specialist to say discard an evade token to pay for this. That's the other. See, now there's another one. It's they, it's not just the token. It's is the fix actually, besides all those other things, does Breach Specialist actually need to be changed? If you do all yeah. the other stuff, do you still need to fix Breach Specialist? No, breach you specialist should be you like a Breach discard. Specialist the way it is, yeah. and then it's only usable in Epic. Mm-hmm. Fine. They it's already really good in went, Epic. They've point, already, yeah. with the Jumpmaster, shown that they are okay with nerfing things that come in the pack. I don't know that they're okay with it. And, well, I'm, they, and they I'm fine it. with that, too. I'm just saying, that... The reinforce action being introduced into the 100 point dogfight has created it's a bad. giant mess for them to try and fix in just a single FAQ. It's bad. It's fair. That ship should not have had an agility. It should have zero agility. And then reinforce isn't nearly as impressive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that may be. If they don't put it on anything CEO, else and make the, the Wookiee have zero still agility, it's like really fine. brutal and just kicks the two attack dice ships while they're down. Oh, yeah. Well, like, no, because then you can only get the one. In the corner. Yeah. <laughs> a two dice primary will still get one damage through if they have zero agility. Yeah, but then what do you have to take like a seven tie swarm and hope you get max hits on well, everything? Well, I mean, that's We're okay. No, that's Nobody a... flies swarms anyway, so it doesn't yeah. matter. But a There's how a reason runner, for that. A how runner swarm, you make it so crack shot can affect reinforce. Does it not? No. It adds an evade, so you can crack shot that. Oh, yeah. it does. Okay, yeah. so it, it does. Okay. Reinforce adds an evade result to your roll. And yeah, you bring a crack swarm, that, and crack you just first. spend the crack, and boom, 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 yeah, boom. Yes, yeah, so you take out one of their four Oz yeah, attacks, and then you spend swarms. the rest of the game not being able to put damage on the remaining three. Well, it's a bad matchup. It's just they. Just hate swarms. Yeah. Speaking of the Oz attack. Which is weird because that should that get requires too much forth. Um, I think it's just. Yeah, I mean, it's not intentional. Someone... <laughs> it's not like they sat down okay, and were like, let's Azatuck. get rid of swarms. Speaking of the Oz attack, oh, on the shit, fuck. Wookie list, mm-hmm. someone got the $20 bounty in the first round of Swiss by beating Dan Hale. Sorry, Dan. Well, yeah. Sorry, Dan. What, uh, Dan was a good sport about it. What but, were they flying? Uh, PS11 Palp Aces, Quick Draw Vader. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. They you had draw. harpoon missiles on their aces, unlike mine. So they had what the same the bounty. Okay. Yeah. I basically oh, at the beginning yeah. of the tournament said, 
If anybody beats Dan, the first person to beat Dan Hale's triple rookie list, I'll give you twenty bucks. Which he's going, a good sport. About going it. back to my point of the gentleman's meta, if you will, <laughs> none of us had ever beaten uh, Dan's triple rookies because we yeah. don't do things like harpoon. And so and the PS eleven pal bases did it, and then Dan almost made a run into the top eight. He lost his last game of Swiss by just a tiny bit, or he'd have made it into the top eight. Yeah. So good for him for taking that loss and then running the table almost. Mm-hmm. He did. He was playing playing his butt off. Phantom is really good. Yeah. yeah, I'm starting to realize that. Mm-hmm. He's he's better than I gave him credit for originally. I feel like Dan has sacrificed multiple children. <laughs> his, his dice rolls are just like ungodly. To the dark lord. <laughs> yes, he does have some crazy rolls. Blood for the blood god. Yes, he is. He does have really good rolls a lot of the time. <laughs> Every time I play, I like, wish I could do that. Three natural crits. Cool. All right. I'll. I'll oh, zero evades. Yep, that was. I rolled four evades. That happened every time I play. Yeah, talk to Mike about not, a second. Round. Not to take away from his skill, like he's a good player too. I just like he's good with those eyes. To be he flies them more just the right distance from each yeah, other. Like yeah. he's good at it. He's an aggressive flyer with those, which really throws you off a little bit. Yeah, up against him. I want I want to save this last missed opportunity for another episode because I think we can delve more into it and just general harpoons and hole punching. Well, cameras. and how to design better. But oh, I do want to ask the question. Now that this fact has happened, is the game in a better place? Slightly. Not much is different, though. It didn't change much. It, it just, like, reiterated a bunch of stuff that everyone already knew, except for a bunch of argumentative what were the, assholes. What were the first two nerfs to the, the Jump master? master? First was Deadeye, right? Yeah, that's yeah. Was yeah. Now, the first Agromech. was, Man, the first was R for Agromech. You couldn't spend the token. You couldn't spend the focus token and immediately get the target lock. So what I feel is, I feel like and it improved they did the game as much as those two nerfs to the Jump Master did yes. in relation to Nimranda. It just means but that the Nimranda same list is still differently. very, very powerful. Yeah. Just like Dengar was still it, it's, very, very powerful So it's until like until they did the additional. It's Nim Miranda is still like, one it's like a go. Vegas buffet, but you take away one thing. Like you yeah. take away like the rolls. So they still need to it's do. Still got a bunch it's, of shit. It's the thing that we talked about more. when the jump masters were raining. It's you're treating the symptom, not the actual. Well, it's disease. got like all of the upgrades in the game, all the ones that matter. But as far as the day to day, like this FAQ got rid of a few questions i'm gonna get there's a couple of really good positive things that came out of it so all all that research i did i I will just say i went and looked at i think i have 13 regionals here and uh 31 in top cuts were nim miranda and that's regionals over just two weekends how many out of 31 so 13 13 regionals in all their top cuts there were 31 nim miranda so that's, I think it is at least a thirty percent objectively that's, better. No, because that's that, like out of fifty or something. Well, because each region has different sizes of cut. Oh right, most yeah. of them are eight. There's a most few sixteen. Of them are eight, it's so. almost three Nimrandas per cut. Have yeah. we ever that's seen a, a list dominate that bad? Triple jumps, right? Dangaroo. Dangaroo. It was it, it, no, Dangaroo didn't, didn't have that many top. It wasn't that finishes. I don't know if it was a specific list or did triple jump. Like masters. triple jumps. Dangar we as his, for a while. his single ship was around a lot, but he was with lots of different things. Uh, triple I mean, defenders, but a specific list. Yeah, triple defenders kind of were all over the place for a short while. Dangaroo required more skill than Nimiranda does. Yes. Yeah, that's why it wasn't. Yeah, you had to spend all those turns bas- banking all those shield tokens. <laughs> <laughs> that was rough. No, Nimiranda was not. I mean, sorry, Dangaroo was not just like plug and play, just go. Yeah, yeah, like if, I if, if I haven't the played this, flying this version of Nimiranda, so I can't say if it's like plug and play or not. It, but it's a double TLT list. I get the impression that it sort of is. Yeah. yeah. It's got every, infinite have, bombs, every line up double an double alpha strike, pretty much. and then TLT, and then maybe line up another alpha strike. Yeah. And drop bombs for basically nothing. And then also, you have and lots of bombs. Harpoons are bad, guys. Bomb. Harpoons are really bad. Harpoons are the worst lo- kind of power creep. They are, yeah. I mean, it's I the it. harpoons are the TLT of missiles now. If Brody was here, you have to have a convincing yelling about yeah. the harpoon missiles because he hates munitions yeah. and for good reason. You have to have a convincing reason to not take harpoon missiles now. 
Well, yeah, like of the four point or potentially even five point missiles, yeah, they're the clear winner. You have to have a compa- that's Several of the Utah players brought other ordnance when most people would have brought her. Oh yeah. yeah, like I saw crews. I saw like Dennis had all no reason not to bring them. His. No, yeah, like, and I looked at him and I was like, dude, why did you not just bring harpoons? He's like, eh. like I could I could see an mm-hmm. argument for like if you had three spare points and you did prockets or something like that. Sure, but if you have the choice, but also proton rockets, you kind of need at least a th- two or three agility ship to be effective. Like, yeah. Don't bother running well, them on a one agility ship. And you also need to line up that range one shot. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have that massive band for mm-hmm. range two and three. Harpoons are the new TLT. And then you have two ships that can take both. So And one of them gets to add a crit with the guidance chips. Mm-hmm. The gunboat doesn't get to do that. Yeah. And yeah. the gunboat is also way more fragile than Star either of those ships. Uh-huh. Uh, that's the nerf the K-Wing. The, my preferred nerf to the K-Wing is Miranda's ability only works on primary weapon. Yep. Yep. Then you can't boost that harpoon on that first shot. Well, my, you can't my, reach in off my TLT. ideal nerf, I guess, is Hole puncher. similar because you just remove the TLT from her. Take the turn away. Yeah, just remove the slot. Anyway, we've we've run a little long, but instead of cutting it short, fuck it, we've we've run long. Let's move into our random roundtable yelling, unhappy hour, whatever. Mike, segment. you have a topic, or I, does anybody else have an actual topic? I, I mean, I have a. I no, have one. I can't record. We'll talk about it later. Okay. Yeah. I, right, I, I mean, I, I have a topic that I've argued with other people about, and it's probably coinciding with a lot of our listeners. Um, Game of Thrones disclaimer. The TV show. I've never read the books. I think the TV show is fucking terrible. You're wrong. After the first three seasons, I agree with you. Why should I watch it for three seasons? What? Don't. Okay, so you're not the only person I've heard say this. I have watched through the first four seasons myself and then just got busy. What specifically makes you think it's terrible? I have tried to watch the show three separate times. I've watched the pilot... Three Stu's, times. He's, 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 he's ready to go. He's gonna explode. And I'm ready to close my ears at any point because I've been avoiding spoilers for like three years now. Oh. Uh, no spoilers. I mean, you've read all the books, right? Yes, but they're past the books, which I, know. I don't want to hear. Which about. also fuck that bullshit. None of us have watched it's, any of the it seasons. Sounds past like the books, Mike right? has not made it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. None of us have actually point. watched any of the seasons. I, I, I think past I've the watched books. the first. I've watched the pilot, and then maybe the second episode a couple times. And it just seems like shitty generic fantasy that's way too rapey and incesty. And that's I, HBO, by the way. And, and I've seen no, that's in those books. <laughs> it's not <laughs> really as bad as any of it. And, like and, in a medieval I, war seen, is terrible kind of thing. But HBO puts it where it wasn't original. So they also oh, kind I, of I, I, okay. except let me finish, finish and then one thing. I will say I saw one episode. In season three or four, when there was more characters in action and the White Walkers, I know what they are. It was better, but it still seemed like generic fantasy to me. So, at, at the time when I started watching this, I was like, "This is kind of I am awful." 50, I'm going to watch. I'm going show. to watch Boardwalk Empire instead. And Boardwalk Empire season, is a better show. Yeah. So here's a th- HBO has this thing where they're like, Boobies. "We have a new show." We are going to put a lot of sex and boobs in it. And sometimes... We are ladies. going to try and hook people with all of that. Then around season two and three, it calms down. Yep. Gets it more does. fantasy stuff. Oh, okay, so it calms down, but does it get beyond generic, bleh, fantasy? I would say it probably... The books are better bit. about it, then. Yeah. It, I think overall, like now, it turns into a really riveting political drama. Oh, yeah, it, yeah I, that's helping. <laughs> I, I actually, I really enjoy. Look, if you wanted to pitch me West Wing, but in Westeros, oh I'd be shit, yes. fucking into that. I mean, I I really like get some walking the books, talks, and I liked like the first two seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the type of fantasy that it is. I really like how well written all the political stuff is. Um. But the show where it started to lose me was when it heavily diverged from the books and then wasn't as good as the books. Yep. Okay. I'd be fine if, like, they kind of went their own way and it was still decent. But, like, 
cumulatively over time, it just starts to pick up more and more stuff that doesn't make sense because they're writing themselves into corners. And well, then, we need to have this character involved in this, even though she's not in these. They're also yeah, they're the like books. combining characters for yeah. the sake of streamlining things, which I yeah. get. Yeah. But it not also when it ruins just the like core concept it of ends up character. yeah, it ends up not working well. Yeah. And it's then, one of those rare book series that really has too much going on to be on TV. Yeah. Yes, they've done a. Pre- they've done. I think they've done a. And they choose good job. the rapey incest parts to put on TV. Yes. The thing is, like they, <laughs> like I said, they, with HBO, they, they try them. and hook you yeah. with the sex. Scenes. Like they marry the violence with the sex, which is horrible. Yeah, and like they make parts of it that already involve incest and potentially rape, and they turn them up to twelve. Mm-hmm. And it's just like then they take scenes that normally like were like a consensual sex scene and then they turn it into a rape scene. Oh yeah, that one with Cersei and mm-hmm. um Jamie is really bad. It's it that's that's when I pretty much stopped watching. Yeah. I wrapped up that season and I was like, I'm done. Uh-huh. That one I cut out not long after that and it's mainly because so, of what they did the to my, my thing with it is <laughs> I I someone I I really like high fantasy, and I give high fantasy. It's low fantasy, actually. It is definitely it? is. Well, yeah. High okay. fantasy high is fantasy. like magic and okay. spells and All elves. Right. Low fantasy is like it's Medieval. just do. It's closer to Conan than it is. To okay, it's like that stuff's Lord around, but it's very rare. I like fantasy. Period. Mm-hmm. How's that? So yeah. I like fantasy a lot. Someone told me to watch it. I watched season one and two. It was awesome. I like. I just like. I watched it in like a weekend yeah Mm -hmm. and then i was like this is the best and then i listened to and and that's why i got audible Uh was to listen (laughs) oh and by the way those books by the way the books on tape are really good shout out to roy detrees pour one out for roy detrees by the way so sad face but anyway so i like i gobbled those up on audible and was just like in love with them and then I also have always done this thing since I was a little kid because my friend's older brother, we read the Hobbit book when we were like sixth grade and he was like, watch this terrible cartoon. Oh, yeah. So every time I watch, every time I read a book that is also adapted to something, I like to watch it and pick it apart. So part of me watching Game of Thrones is like, I read these books and this is what happened and then they did this in the movie and they did it this way and it, that's fun for me. So but, I and enjoy that's, it and for that's like totally that leg- too. Legit, but you're not just... To, you, you're not talking about the show on its own. Yeah, then. but I enjoy... Yeah, I know. <laughs> Game I, of Thrones I don't like really... anything by itself. I seem to... I have to like... I like it because there's this part and you're this co- thing. You're and a I completionist. Just, yeah. Game of Thrones is, I, a, I, yeah. is a strange... It's a strange phenomenon in fantasy fandom because it's... There are... There is a staunch group of people that are like, books only, the show is shit. There is a staunch group of people that would never even be exposed to the fantasy mm-hmm. genre if that show didn't exist. And right. that show, whether you like it or you don't, has done worlds of good for bringing fantasy and science fiction fans yes. out of the woodwork and letting that. their stuff have its time to shine. Mm-hmm. The last five years have been a boom for fantasy and science fiction. Mm-hmm. Literature, yeah. television shows, mm-hmm. original movies across the board and Game of Thrones is part of Can that. you actually roll that back though that like Lord of the Rings movies are kind of the genesis of that? Not really because there's a huge gap between when Lord of the Rings did all of their stuff and the beginning of the big genre of fiction. Boom. It is like a 10-ish year yeah. gap or something. Game of Thrones is what made it mainstream because suddenly the the guy I like me Lord sitting the in the office or the guy like Eric who reads loves fantasy books but I'll be honest, how many times at work have you come across somebody who wants to sit at the lunch table and talk about fantasy books with you? It doesn't happen that often at no. work. Hey, have you heard okay. about the new song of but Ice and soon, Fire? But That's soon, some dirty ass shit right there. As soon as Game of Thrones hit mainstream yeah. about halfway through that first season, suddenly people want to talk about that shit all the time. I feel like... But it's, it's it's a very polarizing show, mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. and it's also a very polarizing book series, especially for people like me. I mean, I read a hundred books a year. George R. R. Martin is a talented author. Fucking find the. He's not even in my top out. ten of yeah. fantasy authors. Oh yeah. So um, 
I was introduced to Game of Thrones by my roommate watching season one. I came home one, yeah. one day from work and he was watching it. Lots of people. And I was were like, what's this? Way, yeah. So we binged it together. After that, I bought the books, all the books, read them before season two came out. Mm -hmm. And I was in love. They were the first true fantasy books that I ever read because I was yeah. always a sci-fi guy. So yep. many people. Like and yes. I absolutely adore them. Mm -hmm. uh, to this day, I still think they're some of the best books that I've ever read. Um, I can't, clearly I can't topped by Patrick Rothfuss, though. Hell yeah. Like, way better. Yeah, but, go check out some Patrick and We'll like, talk about Patrick Rothfuss. Season, Rothfuss season one of Game of yeah. Thrones. <laughs> season one of Game of Thrones does a really good job of encapsulating book one. Yes. Fucking with, without Sean including some of the spoiler stuff. Mm -hmm. And then season two <laughs> mostly did a good job. And yes. then near the end started to diverge in ways that were confusing to me. So they made some they, odd choices. I think they were making those choices more for like editing and cons yeah. making things more yeah. concise. And then and season like three having so many is where it started to lose me because yeah. uh, the third book is my favorite and I think it's a lot of people's favorite probably. And it adds a lot of characters. But it takes a lot of interesting shit out. Like yes. for being low fantasy, they take a lot of the magical stuff oh, out yeah. of the show. Oh, yeah. Like there's um, so little of it and then they take parts of it out. You mean like the part how we're never going to get Lady Stoneheart? Yeah. Uh, like, fuck that. When does Captain Phasma show up? She's in it from the beginning. And <laughs> she's those, awesome. She's, one yeah. of the most interesting things about season one she yeah. up in season was, two? When, was when people who not were not season No, fans. she's in season one because she starts showing up when, um, what's it, uh, the, the brother, the youngest joke. brother. I actually give a shit. No, the youngest brother <laughs> is like having his this rebellion is your topic. This is your and fault. she's super <laughs> into him. Because mm -hmm. she loves Jamie? No, no not Jamie. Renly. It's, um, oh, Renly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's yeah, in love with her. That's right. When she becomes like yeah. know, his guard. Maybe part of what didn't allow me to get in <clears throat> interested is I just maybe have a stronger predisposition towards sci fi and I wasn't one of the people brought over. Like, it could be. You like, know what you need to watch? Is you need to watch The Expanse. Oh, fuck yeah, The Expanse. It, it, it's on like my fuck Amazon Fuck yes. Board. The Expanse might be the greatest science fiction show ever. Made. It's yeah, like, so it good. Is, I've been hearing good is, things about Alter Scott, Carbon. Scott, when we turn this off, we're oh, talking so about Star Trek Discovery. Oh, are you caught up? Yep. Oh, fuck yes. <laughs> Jesus, god damn. The most recent <laughs> yep, episode? Yep, yep. Holy shit. The Expanse is amazing because The Expanse is... If, if humanity actually did expand to the stars in like 50 years... The Expanse is what it would actually be. The Expanse is the most approachable hard sci-fi I've it's found. Real, real science fiction. Like, it's, so but it's it approachable. Real space this is physics. How we ruin all of space instead of just. Yeah. But it's oh. approachable, unlike a lot of hard yeah. sci-fi, which <laughs> the Expanse there's is like amazing. So a level of physics you have to understand. All right, well, now we're talking about space. Yeah. space. One last Game of Thrones thing. Mm -hmm. If you're into reading about descriptions of amazing sounding food read, <laughs> read all of those books oh yeah no. every time they have a feast or a banquet it's just like oh my fucking god i want all of this uh, by the way if you're into that George level of detail, Martin, yeah. Martin, <laughs> conversely yes. if you want to know about uh detailed women's clothing read yes i was time. just about to say that check out some robert jordan because he gets into that level of detail but he with clothing. The women's clothing what george r, r. martin is to feasts God. Without being like rapey and weird. I and that's Robert the end Jordan. of this Star Wars podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let's give out a quick shout out. To, hey, hey um, oh. Tater, you go. Um, okay. So if you think the, our logo is pretty cool, check out our art director stuff. Uh, you can find her at Heather Muller Art on Facebook, Heather Lime on Twitter, and Heather Muller88 on Instagram. Cool. Uh, let's give a quick thanks to uh, Kodiak Ducks. And Alex Mimjia for the uh, follows. Hey, make sure and send us an email and we'll uh, get you some swag. Uh, big shout out to Carson for uh, following us and then also commenting on our stream for a bit. And uh, you guys should check out Radio TCX. I don't know how many of you guys are Patreon subscribers to them, but I definitely am. They actually send out some good swag too. Yeah, if you listen to us and not Radio TCX, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, everybody should be listening to Radio TCX. Yeah. Also, check out Evergreen. Uh, shout out to Kyle. Yeah, hell yeah, Evergreen. I got to find a meet Kyle because uh, we were passing the night. When he's a cool guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's right. a cool dude. Yeah, he's um, really cool. Okay, so I want to ask uh, Kodiak Ducks. Is he is Kodiak Ducks one of our local people, and which one is that? You sure he's not Canadian? 
Mm, so is that actually uh, Mark? I don't know. We should ask him. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, well, well, and speaking of, of Mark Stewart from X-Wing Junkies, I'd intended to talk uh, about him making the top eight at the Calgary oh, shit. regional. Congrats, Mark. Is he flying Whisper? Um, <laughs> hold on. No, because Whisper's on the fly with the current meta. Oh, maybe not in Canada. No, because his list was awesome. It was like Quick Draw, Kylo Ren, and an Academy pilot. And they yeah. made a custom card. Oh, he was oh, flying Carl? Carl? Carl, the Academy pilot. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> So shout out to Mark. Uh, speaking of Radio TCX and other X-Wing podcasts, if you like X-Wing podcasts and want to find more of them, check out xwingpodcast.com. Collects all the ones from all over the country and probably the world. The world. The world, the world, world. Says, in one convenient place so you can give them all a try. See which one you like. Yeah. And if you like us, um, Brody, Scott, Eric, and I do another podcast called The Floor is Lager, where we play D&D. Um, Brody is currently on paternity leave, so we have been doing some one-offs. We just did one last week with Heather instead of Brody, and Eric was the DM on that one. So part one of that will be coming He's shaking out. shaking his head as we yeah, because it went for like 12 hours. <laughs> part one of that will be out by the time encounter. you hear this. So you can go ahead and check it out. It's and like then... one combat encounter that we had to edit out because like we oh, spent the whole day I didn't edit it out. Oh, okay. So it's like an 18-hour podcast? No, I streamlined Can't wait it. for you guys to let us know about all those threes and fours everyone rolled on their <laughs> attack rolls for That's the magic minutes, of Dungeons and Dragons. Including the things they were fighting. <laughs> yeah, no, it, really. Wait, it's wait. like that scene like in uh, Revenge of the Sith where Obi-Wan <laughs> and Anakin are just waving their lightsabers in front of each other and not hitting each other. Yeah, and that's exactly That what is what happened for about 40 minutes of oh our podcast. God. And it was hilarious. 40 minutes per player. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> All right. Shout out to uh, Dylan and Steve and Mark and Ryan and our other patrons. Sorry, I haven't been consistent with the shout outs. Um, I, I've been talking about us having new swag, and we are in the process of getting that. I've started talking to yep. uh, artists about some upcoming stuff, so hopefully by the next time we record, uh, I'll have some new news for that. Hell yeah. Um, cheers, everyone. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks. Yeah, cheers. 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 Bud Light, Budweiser, that's the worst out of Yeah, I disagree. Of this it's is pretty the best. best. No, out it's of the not. shitty beer. Bud uh, Light is best High Life is the best out of all those beers. Uh, I don't put it in the same category with these because it is so much better. What about Yingling? I don't put it well, in there either. I guess you guys can't really best. get it can't out get here. It. But like <laughs> out east, it's on that level. You can get Yingling at the liquor store. I don't think you can. I swear I I've seen it. it. The one on 4th South, you can. It's the oh. only <laughs> in America. Is that <laughs> cream soda? You can get pumpkin scotch at the liquor store. Is that cream soda? Why would you want pumpkin scotch? I don't know, but that's what was there when I went with my boss to buy a bunch of beer for the work party. the red cream soda that Bart's makes? I did. It's not bad. Last time I was the grocery store, I almost bought a selection of root beers. We've been recording for a little bit now. Cool. Is this all going at the end? Maybe we all bitch about your coolers. Dick butt and everything but far succumb to the darkness. <laughs>